What is up with you, Bright Minds? We hope you're having a wonderful day. It's us again, your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan. Back at it again as we make sure you will learn and we all will enjoy our English lessons together. So are you up for it? Then what are we waiting for? Let's get it on! Have you ever heard of the expression carpe diem? It is widely known as seize the day. Most people usually say that it means we should live in the moment. Enjoy the present. YOLO, you only live once. Trust what the future holds for you. But if we try to look at the whole line from Horace's injunction, it says carpe diem quam minimum credula postero. It can be translated as pluck the day, trusting as little as possible in the next one. Trusting as little as possible in the next one? That seems like the opposite of living the moment and trusting the future, right? What it actually means then is this, that we should take the opportunities we have now, whatever they may be, so that we can make a better future. It means that you don't trust the future to be good without you doing anything to make it good. You have to do something good in the present for the future to be good. Just like learning English, we have to use the time and opportunities we have now so we can be really good in using the language in the future. Speaking of maximizing our time and taking every opportunity possible, Let's hear it from a person who has really gone beyond his own expectations of his future and yet has kept his feet on the ground. Hello Bright Minds, I'm Sir Pip de la Cruz, the principal of MB Asisio Senior High School. How can one person be successful in life? Uh, you have to uh, make an impact to the world, so that's a success for me. Be determined. So, by being determined, uh, you will not be able to give up. And that is the secret for you to achieve success. For the last question, po, sir, what do you think are the most effective ways to learn the lessons? Experience is the best teacher. You have to learn through your experience. Of course, when you say experience, it's not about uh, just victory. There may also be defeat. Don't easily give up. Because if you give up, you will not be able to achieve your dream. As the saying goes, experience is the best teacher. And the worst experiences teach the best lessons. Thank you very much, Sir Pip de la Cruz, the principal of Macario Biasisto Senior High School, Maine. We salute you, sir. Why are we talking about these things? That's because for today, we will be talking about expressing your stand using conditionals. Before that, let's have a recap of our previous lessons. Now look back on your notes for this one. What is a conditional sentence? Exactly. These are statements expressing the result of a particular condition using an if or when clause and a result clause. How many conditionals are there? You're right. We have four. The zero conditional, the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional. Now, how do we write a zero conditional or the factual conditional? Correct. A zero conditional is written with present simple verbs in both the if or when clause and the result clause. What about the first conditional or the possible conditional? Great job! The first conditional uses the present simple in the if or when clause and its result clause uses the future tense which is will plus the base form of the verb. What about the second conditional? How do we write it? Very good! We have to remember that in writing a second conditional, 
the verb in the if clause should be written in the past simple, while the result clause should be would plus the base form of the verb. And lastly, the third conditional. How do we construct a third conditional sentence? You are correct! In writing the third conditional, we use the past perfect tense in the if clause and for the result clause, we use would have plus the past participle of a verb. Impressive! Keep up the good work, guys! Let me give you some pro tips from Sir DJ's study tips. Study tip number one. The best way to retain information in your mind is to concentrate. Cut out distractions. Turn off your phone or put it on silent mode while studying. This way, you'll get to focus better. In my case, I put my phone in a place far from where I study. Study tip number two. Don't push it. Take a short break every now and then. Sometimes our eyes get tired. Our brains are like computers sometimes. When they overheat, we need to take some time off so we can work at peak condition again. And that's it for Sir DJ's study tips. Conditionals are a bit confusing, right? Now you might be asking, Dan and Sir DJ, is there a way to easily understand how conditional sentences work? Yes, there is. Dan and I got your back. Here's a simple trick. For us to easily grasp the concept of conditionals, we must understand time. Time from a different perspective. And we need to understand that time relates to verb tenses. For us to easily understand how it works, here's a timeline. Let's begin with the present. If I say, I teach English, I like video games, I am wearing a white polo. This shows that the present tense shows facts and truth. Now what about the future? Do we know what will happen in the future? No. Does the future exist? No, or not yet. So basically, the future is just a guess or a prediction. A prediction that can be right or wrong. It's a probability. Now what about the past, which is on the opposite side of our timeline? These are things that already took place. Things that are impossible to change. We call it improbability. This simple concept will make us understand conditionals much easier. Let's begin with the zero conditional. We know that the zero conditional is the factual conditional. And looking back at its composition, what verb form does it use? Present simple, because it talks about the truth. If you freeze water, it turns into ice. What about the first conditional? As we all know, the first conditional also uses the present tense in the if clause. But the result clause is no longer a fact. It is now just a possibility or a probability. So in this conditional, we need to use the simple future tense in the result clause. Remember that? If she stops driving, you will take the wheel. Got that? Now for the second conditional, we are talking about improbability. Things that have a slight chance of happening. If I wrote a poem, I would dedicate it to you. Lastly, the third conditional. The third conditional talks about the things that are impossible due to the fact that the third conditional is about the things that we want to change in the past. And as we have discussed before, it is impossible to change the past. If I had eaten more, I wouldn't have felt so hungry. I sure hope you were able to understand that learning trick. It's easier to understand it this way, right? Now let's get back to our discussion about using conditionals in expressing a stand or an argument. 
Expressing arguments are helpful in presenting one's reasoning to change one's point of view in a particular topic or issue. Conditionals may be helpful in persuading others to move or act and even change their thoughts. To tell us more about expressing one stand or argument using conditionals, Dan and I have invited an expert to hear what she has to say regarding this topic. Let us all welcome Mam Lilet S. Lavina, the Grammar Grandma. Hello there, bright minds. I am your Grammar Grandma, Lilet Lavinia, and I also happen to be the QA person for all the English subject broadcast on DepEd TV. So here's my first question, Bob. Uh, why is it important to learn how to express your stand or your opinion? Well, it's very important to learn how to express your stand or opinion. When you encounter situations in your life where you may be compromising your values, and when you don't make a stand for it, that says something about you. To quote Martin Luther King Jr., he says, Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So expressing your stand, expressing your opinion, says a lot about your character, about you. And I feel that you need to be able to express your point of view so that you can make a positive difference when it matters. Wow, thank you very much for the wonderful answer, ma'am. So here's my second question. How can we effectively express our stand using conditionals? You know, we can make use of conditions to express our stand and opinions in a diplomatic manner. You know, this is what the if and when clause does. You're able to say, you're allowed to say um, a specific scenario. You're allowed to state a specific scenario where you're trying to say that this is situation and then you can do something in the results for example can i give an example yes sure ma'am go ahead okay. you know <laughs> i really like the modal wood that we use in one of the conditionals i think it's the second conditional that we use it in so let me yes. give you a sentence for example if i were given a chance i would come up with a program that will help our English students under, understand the language better. I like wood as a modal for conditionals because it shows a preference. So even though it's highly unlikely that I'll be able to come up with a program like that, people are going to see my good intentions. Isn't that great? And that's why I love conditionals because it makes me sound so much nicer. Now for my third question, what tips can you give us so we can easily express our opinion better? The first one is this. When it comes to opinions, yours and others, it's always a must to keep an open mind. Why? Because you want, you can express your opinions better and they will also be better received if you always consider the other person's point of view. Do you agree? Yes, I agree, ma'am. <laughs> okay, second, make sure that your opinions are based on information that can be validated and supported by credible sources. You know, your credibility can suffer if your opinions won't hold up if you're talking with someone with an opposing point of view. So make sure that your opinions are based on the truth. And for my last tip, you will be able to express your opinions better if you keep on improving your communication skills. And your subject, English, is a big part of that. I know that it can be a little difficult and commit your commitment is needed. But you know what? You're not going to regret it. In no time, you're going to be more confident and be ready to face anyone, whether they have opposing views or not. 
So I hope you really take my tip serious. Okay? I will. And I'm sure the bright minds that are watching us right now will definitely take your advice seriously. Thank you very much, Mom Lily. Okay. Thank you so much, Mom Lily, for sharing your expertise with us. We are shortly going to treasure those in our minds and in our hearts. For our activity, we want you to choose the letter of the correct answer. What form of verb should we use in our sentences? Write the letters of your answers in your notebook. Are you ready? Let's play! Don't be hysterical! Let's complete the conditional. Number 1. If Lita blank caught by quarantine officers, she can't go home until they release her. Is it A. Gets, B. Got, or C. Will get? If your answer is A, then you are correct. Nice! If Lita gets caught by quarantine officers, she can't go home until they release her. Number 2. I'll send the report to my supervisor as soon as I blank the notice. Is it A. Receive, B. Will receive, or C. Received? If you think the answer is A again, very good! A is the correct answer. I'll send the report to my supervisor as soon as I receive the notice. Number 3. I blank heartburn if I continue drinking coffee and eating spicy food. A. Get B. Will get or C. Got What should we use for this sentence? B. That is the correct answer. Good one! I will get heartburn if I continue drinking coffee and eating spicy food. Let's try number 4. You don't have to bring your books as long as blank the ebook versions. Is it A. You have B. You had or C. You'll have What do you think is the answer for this one? A. You're right! A is the right answer. You don't have to bring your books as long as you have the ebook versions. Great job! Let's try number 5. Whenever I leave the house, I always blank my mom to feed my pet dog Choo Choo. Is it A. Asked? B. Would ask? Or C. Ask? Hmm. Is it A? No, I don't think so. You're right. The answer is C. Whenever I leave the house, I always ask my mom to feed my pet dog Choo Choo. You're doing good so far. Keep it up. Number 6. If I blank the issue to the manager, she'll find ways to solve it. A. Present B. Presented or C. Had presented I wonder, which verb should we use? Spot on! The answer for this one is A. If I present the issue to the manager, she'll find ways in solving it. Let's go to number 7. I'll send it to you as soon as blank home. A. I get B. I'll get or C. I get This is an easy one. I'm sure you'll get it right. Correct. The answer for number 7 is C. I'll send it to you as soon as I get home. Number 8. I blank my pet to the vet if I had time. Is it A. Took B. Will take or C. Would take What about this one? We can see that the if clause has the word had. Hmm. If you think the answer is C, then you got that right. I would take my pet to the vet if I had time. 
let's take a look at number nine. If I blank Clint, I'd go back to my parents and ask for their forgiveness. Is it A, were, B, am, or C, will be? As I have mentioned before, I'd is a contraction of I would. What verb would best complete our sentence? You're right, were. Letter A is the correct answer. Great job. If I were Clint, I'd go back to my parents and ask for their forgiveness. Let's move on to the last one. If I had known how you felt, I blank considered your proposal. Is it A, had, B, will have, or C, would have? What's that? Do you think the answer is C? Wow, you're really good at this. That is correct. C would have. If I had known how you felt, I would have considered your proposal. I am really happy to see that you are getting the hang of using conditionals. You really are amazing. Good job on keeping up with us. For that, you get another two thumbs up from Sir DJ and Dan. And that ends our episode today. That was a blast. I hope you had an amazing time with us, your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan. Stay tuned because in the next episode, we will make use of our imagination. Always keep safe, guys. And as I always say, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. See you in the next one. Peace.